We're also celebrating trailblazers as part of our Black History Month coverage. And this morning, we're focusing on two groundbreaking chefs. Chef Alexander Smalls is a James Beard Award winner, and he's the force behind two critically acclaimed restaurants in Harlem. The former opera singer, I know, burst onto the <laughs> restaurant scene in the 1990s. Meanwhile, Chef Kwame Anawachi sold candy on the subway to pay for his first catering business. The author and former Top Chef competitor has since opened five restaurants, and they caught up with each other recently at Chef Alexander's New York City apartment. All right, I got you going. I grew up looking up to you, knowing about your story in your restaurant. My mom's a chef, so she always yes, let she me. Is. You know, she she made sure that I was privy to all that came before me. And it's so awesome for me to be sitting down with you. This is what we do. Where did it all start? <laughs> I need to know, because I know everyone else wants to know, where did it start? So I grew up in Spartanburg, South Carolina. You know, it really started like everything else. In my mother's kitchen. When I was growing up, segregation was still very much alive. So we stayed home a lot. It's funny you say that because the reason why I even cook today is because my family grew up in the South, right. like my ancestors, and there was so much segregation to the point they didn't go out to eat. Right. But we had places in the back of our homes, convenience stores, Absolutely. juke joints, yes. rib shacks, Miss fish fries. Miss Hattie's exactly. Joint. So my family always ran the restaurants in whatever <laughs> small town they were in. And that's why I come from a long line of restaurant right. tours, out of necessity. I grew up in the Bronx, right here in New York City. My mother was a huge influence on me. And also just New York City being a melting pot as it is yep. of all these different cultures and cuisines. And she had a catering company that she operated from the house. And right. if I wanted to have the lights on, you know, I needed to help out. You know, and she threw me in <laughs> All apron. hands on deck. All hands on deck at all times. <laughs> I started to veer off on the wrong path. I started to stay out late when I was supposed to come home. I was also a, a, a pretty bad kid when I was younger. And my parents uh, Precocious. told me. Yeah, there you go. My parents told me I was going on a two-week vacation to Nigeria. And they left me there for two years mm. in order to learn respect. But it shaped me into the man that I am today right. because, you know, we had to, like, kill our own livestock. You know, I was really able to appreciate my ingredients and where they came from and the why behind it. That's what led me here to today is just wanting to really convey the act of hospitality in every single Well, that's where you found your power mm -hmm. and your strength. Yeah. You mean, you realized that what you did in that kitchen, you could put it on a plate mm -hmm. and people would be blown away. I mean, because those of us who cook, those of us in the restaurant industry, it's like a drug. I've done five restaurants and a 22,000 square foot food hall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And still I'm making plans for more restaurants. For sure. And I've opened up five restaurants before I even turned 30. <laughs> You know, and there are more on the horizon. Rolling on a river. You were an opera singer. Yes. How did you go from an opera singer to being this world-renowned chef? Well, of course, Kwame, I'm still an opera singer. I can't singer. tell. I haven't heard you sing yet. I wanted to really be the first African-American male who was prominent on the operatic scene. I decided that I had gone as far uh, as I could with opera mm. and that I really needed to be in control of my destiny. I couldn't own an opera house, but I could own a restaurant. So that was the transition. And so I set out to open what I felt would be the most important restaurant um, with respect to who we were as African Americans. Mm -hmm. And that was Cafe Beulah. And then I opened Sweet Ophelia's uh, shortly after that. Okay. And then I opened uh, the Shoebox Cafe. You had one of the most premier restaurants, period, African American or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but no. at the time, there weren't a lot of black chefs cooking food right. at your level, but also with your confidence. You've had a long-running relationship with Top Chef. Yeah. Kwame, I like the dish a lot. I think the flavor is really fantastic. On both sides of the table. Literally, literally. Tell me about that. You know, for me, it was amazing 
being so young and having this platform. Great for my career, it gave me so much exposure. And then, you know, fast forward to this moment, being on the other side of the right. table as a judge. Table turn. Brittany, I think your stew is good. It has some depth of flavor. What do you have to say to the next generation of chefs coming up that are young, black, and gifted? Ownership. 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 It has made all the difference in my life. Be present, be intentional, roar like a lion. That's what I would tell you. I love that. What, what are you cooking? Um, well, I've made dessert. I'm so proud of what you've been able to accomplish. Thank I mean, you. because you, more than, than most, understand what it is to be a trailblazer. You had a, a fine dining establishment in your early 20s that was attended by everybody that was anybody, including the president. And I look at you as someone who has picked up the mantle. I basically felt very strongly about making sure that people understood what the African-American kitchen was all about, mm -hmm. you know. And then you come along and continue the conversation Thank in you. an extraordinary way, Thank which you. is our common ground. Mm -hmm. But I think we both have become activists in our pursuit of uh, expanding the table for the African and African-American kitchen. Also, like, I think we're, we're just trying to keep the culture alive in any way possible. And that's why we put ourselves so much on a plate. Mm, I've tasted uh, Chef Alexander Small's cooking. He is really, really, really good. Now I want to try Chef Kwame. Yeah. L just looking at the pictures on the screen. I know, I make your this mouths thing. are watering here. I so know. good. Delicious sandwiches. I wonder what they cooked together that night. I wonder. I know, yeah. that. Yeah, I that dinner that. table. I also love what uh, Chef Alexander says. Yeah, roar like a lion, intentional, that's all good. <laughs> Own. Ownership, yeah. gotta have a piece Very of that pie. Absolutely. And he's got a beautiful singing voice too. Special shout out to you, Shannon Louis Brand, who produced that piece. We always say this good. all the time. It's always very good. difficult to do those yeah. with no track and have it make sense. But Shannon yeah. always hits it out of the park. Yes, she always does. Well done again, Shannon.